Hey, it's Mr. Estrada here, and we're going to go ahead and cover the August 2015 Common Core Geometry Regents. Don't forget to like or subscribe. Let's get to it. So, number one, the topic is properties of parallelograms and special types of parallelograms. So, number one, a parallelogram must be a rectangle when it's. So, in order for you to answer a question like this, you must know these properties that we've covered in class. You will see here that in a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. So if we have congruent diagonals, then we will have a rectangle. So then the answer to number one is diagonals are congruent. Choice one uh, would prove that the parallelogram is a rhombus, so it's not choice one. And then opposite sides are parallel. Well, that's just true for all parallelograms. And same thing with choice four. All right, number two. If triangle A prime, B prime, C prime is the image of triangle ABC, under which transformation will the triangles not be congruent? So for this question, you need to understand that only a dilation can produce an image that will not be congruent to the original image. Only a dilation can do that. So the answer is choice three. All the other ones, reflections, translations, and rotations, they will produce congruent images. Okay, so number three. So the topic here is rotations of two-dimensional objects to produce a three-dimensional object, to produce a solid. So in order to illustrate this, I have this animation here. I'm going to go ahead and, and revolve it now. So you can see that it's revolving around that um, axis of revolution. We call that axis of revolution in calculus. And, and you can see that the solid that's produced is a cylinder. So, you know, we're just, go, we're just trying to visualize this, right? We have an axis of revolution here, and then we're just going to go ahead and continuously rotate this, right? So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and do that, right? We're going to go, like, in, in, in that motion, right? That's the motion we're going in. And if we do that, we're going to go ahead and get a cylinder, just like you saw in the animation over here. All right, so number four, which expression is always equivalent to the sine of x when x is between 0 and 90? So this is testing your knowledge of cofunctions. So if we, we're supposed to know in order to answer this question, I mean, it helps to know that if a plus b is equal to 90 degrees, right, if angle a and angle b are complementary, um, then the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B. Okay, so we're supposed to know that. That's something you're supposed to know going into this test. And I'm going to go ahead and show you some examples of that. Um, the answer then, therefore, since we know this, the answer must be choice one. Right? A plus B must equal to 90 in order for the um, sine of A to be equal to the cosine of B. And I can go ahead and illustrate this. Um, let's just um, take the calculator, make sure we are in degree mode. And I can illustrate this by just showing you um, some examples. The sine of 30 must be equal to the cosine. According to this, right, the sine of 30 must be equal to the cosine of 60, right? Because 60 plus 30 is 90, and it is. And then this, this relationship will always hold as long as a plus b is equal to 90. Another thing you could have done for this problem is you could have just made something up for x, right? Just plug something in there, some number between 0 and 90, I don't know, like 30, like we just used, right? And then um, you would see, okay, the sine of 30 is equal to the cosine of 90 minus 30, right? So that mean, that would mean the sine of 30 is equal to the cosine of 60. And we know that's true. We just saw that in the calculator. Okay, uh, number five. 
mapping a polygon onto itself. For this one, we're going to have to look at each one of the options and pick the one that does not carry the square onto itself. So we have, as the first option, a reflection over the line x equals 5. So then that would be the line right over here. If a line is in the form of x equals some constant, we know that it's going to be a vertical line. So now, if we reflect this square across this line, what will that produce? Well, um, go ahead and do it. I mean, just work it out. Let's call this point A. Let's call this point B. We'll call this point C, and then we'll call this point D. So then A is going to A is six units away from the line of reflection. So then it should reflect six units away. So it would be about here, right? So then that would be my A prime, and then B prime should be about here, right? Six units away from the line of reflection. Now, D and C are on the line of reflection, so they'll remain invariant. That means they'll stay right there. See that the square is not going to map onto itself, right? We we get a we get another square that does not map onto itself. So then th the answer is choice one. And yes, I'm going to go ahead and show you the other one so that you can see how they do map onto themselves. So you can see what it looks like to map onto itself. So I'll go ahead and undo this. So then we have the line y equals 2. And then that's this line. So y equals 2 is a horizontal line. We got A, B, C, and D. Okay, so now let's take point B. How far is point B from the line of reflection? Three units away, so it will reflect three units away this way. So then B prime will be right here. How far is A from the line of reflection? It's three units away, so then A will reflect here. So then A prime is here. And then you can you could see that C prime is going to be here, and then D prime is going to be here. And then we get the same we get the same exact figure, the same exact thing, right? So what just happened is that the square just mapped onto itself. And then what happened here uh, with y equals 2, that will be the case for option 3 and option 4.